I'm going too fast, stop me. It's your dime. This is part of the USS Arizona. It was put under honor guard when they took it off. The honor guard never left it, and so they gave it to us. Now, about three or four years ago, I had a high school student ask me how much I thought that was worth today. I said, well, <clears throat> about 10 years. And everybody laughed. And he said, no, really. I said, about 10 years. We have cameras, and we will prosecute. So don't even think about it. Okay. There's a guy named Don, Don Stratton. Donald Stratton, he wrote a book, All the Gallant Men. He was a member of that crew. He published that book about seven years ago. I think he left the world about three years ago. All right? If you can find that book, I would suggest you read it. He talked about what it was like to be in the military before the war, what it was like when the, when the attack happened. The Arizona was not supposed to be at Pearl Harbor. It was supposed to be in Washington. But what happened was, they're out on maneuvers, and the Oklahoma ran into it. Now, if you recall from the history lessons, there was a ship next to Arizona called the Vesta. It was a repair ship. They were trying to fix it up to get it to Washington, but Japanese attack occurred. Stop it. Don was right here when that magazine exploded. He and four other, three others, they couldn't get out. His feet were on fire because the metal was that hot. 75% of the skin burned off his body. All the skin off his hands. The guy on the vessel saw him. He couldn't leave him. He defied the captain's orders and fired a line across him. But the captain would want to get ready to leave and get that ship out of there because there was another million pounds of explosives in the back that had not exploded yet. And he didn't want to be here when it happened. But he defied his captain's orders. At any rate, those four guys, 50 foot, hand over hand, all that burn damage, hand over hand, across the roof, above that floor, burning oil in the fire, in the, in the water, made it to the vessel. One died on the vessel, the other two survived. Don spent a year and a half recovering and healing from his burns. He was discharged from the Navy in 1943. He couldn't stand it. His family and friends were still fighting. He re-enlisted. Wow. Finished the war on the destroyer, off Okinawa, fighting off Okinawa. He got an honorable medal, I'm sure. No? I don't know <laughs> what he got. My goodness. But he wrote a good book. Mm -hmm. All right? He wasn't a snowflake. Okay? That's the reason why they call them the greatest generations. They earned it. I thank my mom, even though she was one of you guys. She did what she could as a civilian. She put up with it. She was the greatest generation. Here's another part of the greatest generation. Dusty Yarrow. And unfortunately, too many in my generation. Hopefully, none in your generation have made the mistake of thinking if you don't look like us, you're not as good as we are. Ted, in that tent, will tell you you strip the skin off, we all look the same. We all bleed the same color blood. So my dad's generation made the mistake of thinking that if you're black, you're not as good as white. And my dad felt that way. And he brought up the IQ test, which tended to prove it. But I want to ask you something. Who wrote the IQ test, blacks or whites? Whites. White farmers or white college and parish people? College. Yep. These folks came off out of the fields. And quite frankly, they have a different language, a different culture. Is it any wonder they weren't scored as well? 
That's why in 1969, halfway through my enlistment in the Air Force, it became illegal to use an IQ test for job placement because bias is built in despite their best efforts. They're not allowed to do it. And these guys proved how wrong my dad's generation was. And anybody out that thinks because you don't look, and that includes Asians. We didn't think the Japanese could be near as good as us. They got that big old smanny eyes, and you watch the cartoons during that time. Buck teeth, yellow skin, big thick glasses, round. The zero proved how stupid and ignorant we were. That airplane would make square turns around us. It took us two years to figure out how to fight that airplane.